Hello, I'm Caroline. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'd like to read from this book. It's DK Eyewitness Astronomy Explore Planets, Stars, and Galaxies and find out how we have viewed them through the ages. And I really hope you enjoy it. So I'll get started. The study of the heavens. The word astronomy comes from a combination of two Greek words, astron meaning star and nimein meaning to name. Even though the beginnings of astronomy go back thousands of years before the ancient Greeks began studying the stars, the science of astronomy has always been based on the same principle of naming the stars. Some of the names we use today come directly from the Greeks, since they were the first astronomers to make a systematic catalogue of all the stars they could see. A number of early civilizations remembered the relative positions of the stars by putting together groups that seemed to make patterns in the night sky. One of these looked like a curling river, so it was called Eridanus, the great river. Another looked like a hunter with a bright belt and sword and was called Orion, the hunter. Stars are now named according to their placement inside the pattern and graded according to brightness. For example, the brightest star in the constellation Scorpius is called a Scorpii because A is the first letter in the Greek alphabet. It is also called Antares, which means the other Mars, because it shines bright red in the night sky and strongly resembles the blood-red planet Mars. Watching the skies. Some of the earliest astronomers were shepherds who watched the heavens for signs of the changing seasons. The clear nights would have given them opportunity to recognize familiar patterns and movements of the brightest heavenly bodies. Studying the stars. Almost every culture made a study of the stars. During the so-called Dark Ages in Europe, the science of astronomy was developed by the Arabic-speaking peoples. The Greek star catalogues were improved and updated by the great Arabic astronomers, such as al-Sufi. This is an engraving of al-Sufi with a celestial globe. Unchanging sky. In all but the most of the largest cities where the stars are shrouded by pollution or hidden by the glare of street lamps, the recurring display of the night sky is still captivating. The view of the stars from the Earth has changed remarkably little during the past 10,000 years. The sky on any night in the 21st century is nearly the same as the one seen by people who lived thousands of years ago. The night sky for people of the early civilizations would have been more accessible because their lives were not as sheltered from the effects of nature as ours are. Despite the advances in the technology of astronomical observation, which include radio telescopes, where the images appear on a computer screen, the telescopes launched into space to detect radiation that does not penetrate our atmosphere. There are still things the amateur astronomer can enjoy, 
Websites publish star charts so that on a given night, in a specified geographical location, anyone looking upwards into a clear sky can identify the constellations for themselves. Traditional symbols. The heritage of the Greek science of the stars passed through many different civilizations. In each case, the figures of the constellations took on the personalities of the heroes of local legends. The Mediterranean animals of the zodiac were transformed by other cultures, such as the Persians and Indians into more familiar creatures like the ibex, brahma bulls or a crayfish. This page is from an 18th century Arabic manuscript. It depicts the zodiological signs of Gemini, Cancer, Aries and Taurus. The signs are in the Arabic script, which is read from right to left. Looking at stars, many of the sky's mysteries can be seen with a good pair of binoculars. This modern pair gives a better view of the heavens than either Newton, Galileo or other great astronomers could have seen with their best telescopes. Ray, rays of light enter the objective lens. Two prisms fold up the light path. Light passes to the eye. From superstition to science. The science of astronomy grew out of a belief in astrology. The power of the planets and stars to affect life on the earth. Each planet was believed to have the personality and powers of one of the gods. Mars, the god of war, shown here, determined war, plague, famine and violent death. Aztec mythology. In the Americas, the mythology of the stars was stronger than it was in Europe and Asia. This Aztec calendar shows the god Quetzalcoatl first, who combined the influences of the Sun and Venus. His worship included ritual, human sacrifice. Imaging space. With large telescopes, such as the Hubble Space Telescope, the AFST, astronomers today can observe objects a billion times fainter than anything the scientists saw with the naked eye, including galaxies billions of light years away. The HST was put into Earth's orbit by a space shuttle in 1990. Working above the atmosphere, it can make high resolution observations in the infrared and ultraviolet as well as a visible light. Astronauts serviced and repaired it on five separate shuttle missions. The last in 2009 should keep the AHST operational for the next decade. Ancient Astronomy By watching the cyclic motion of the sun, the moon and the stars, early observers soon realised that these repeating motions could be used to fashion the sky into a clock, to tell the passage of the hours of the day or night, and a calendar to mark the progression of the seasons. Ancient monuments such as Stonehenge in the UK 
and the pyramids of the Maya in Central America offer evidence that the basic components of the observational astronomy have been known for at least 6,000 years. With few exceptions, all civilizations have believed that the steady movements of the sky were the signal of some greater plan. The phenomenon of a solar eclipse, for example, was believed by some ancient civilizations to be a dragon eating the sun. A great noise would successfully frighten the dragon away. The Roman god Jupiter, naming the planets, the spread of knowledge tends to follow the two routes of trade and war. As great empires expanded, they brought their gods, customs and learning with them. The earliest civilizations believed that the stars and planets were ruled by the gods. The Babylonians, for example, named each planet after the god that had most in common with that planet's characteristics. The Greeks and the Romans adopted the Babylonian system, replacing the names with those of their own gods. All the planets names can be traced directly to the Babylonian planet gods. Nergal has become Mars and Marduk has become the god Jupiter. The world's oldest observatory. The oldest observatory to have survived is the Chum Sung Day Observatory in Gyeongju, Korea. A simple beehive structure with a central opening in the roof. It resembles a number of prehistoric structures found all over the world. Many modern observatories still have a similar roof opening. Phases of the Moon The changing face of the Moon has always deeply affected people. A new Moon was considered the best time to start an enterprise. And a full Moon was often feared as a time when spirits were free to roam. The word lunatic comes from the Latin name for the Moon, Luna, because it was believed that the rays of the full moon caused insanity. Recording the sun's movements. Even though the precise significance of the standing stones at Stonehenge remains the subject of debate, it is clear from the arrangement of the stones that it was erected by prehistoric peoples, specifically to record certain key celestial events, such as the summer and winter and winter solstices and the spring and autumnal equinoxes. Although Stonehenge is the best known of the ancient megalithic monuments, those made of stone in prehistoric times, the sheer number of similar sites throughout the world underlines how many prehistoric peoples placed an enormous importance on recording the motions of the sun and the moon. Sta Station Stone Aubrey holes are around pits that were part of the earliest structure. Heel stones marks the original approach to Stonehenge. Avenue, the sun, slaughter stone formed a ceremonial entrance. 
altar stone, station stone, barrow, circular bank and ditch, circle of sarsen stones with lintels, Babylonian records. The earliest astronomical records are in the form of clay tablets from ancient Mesopotamia and the great civilizations that flourished in the plains between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers for more than 2,000 years. At least two of these civilizations were named after Babylon a major city in Mesopotamia. The oldest surviving astronomical calculations are relatively late, dating from the 4th century BCE, but they are based on generations of astronomical observations. Back of a Persian astrolabe, degree scale, Sight hole, rotating Adelaide, shadow square. The astrolabe, one of the problems faced by ancient astronomers, was how to simplify the complex calculations needed to predict the, pos the positions of the planets and stars. One useful tool was the astrolabe whose different engraved plates reproduce the sphere, the sphere of the heavens in two dimensions. The alidade, with its sight holes, is used to measure the height of the sun or the stars. By setting this against the calendar scale on the outside of the instrument, a number of different calculations can be made. Planning harvest. For nearly all ancient cultures, astronomy was important as a guide to the changing seasons. The Egyptians knew that when the star Sirius rose ahead of the sun, the annual flooding of the Nile was not far behind. Schedules for planting and harvesting were all set by the sun, the moon and the stars. Arabic manuscript from the 14th century showing an astrolabe being used. Ordering the universe. A great deal of our knowledge about the ancient science of astronomy comes from the Alexandrian Greek philosopher Claudius Ptolemaeus 100 to 178 CE. Known as Ptolemy, he was an able scientist in his own right, but most importantly he collected and clarified the work of all the great astronomers who had lived before him. He left two important sets of books. The Almagest was an astronomy textbook that provided an essential catalogue of all the known stars. Updating Hipparchus. In the Tetrabiblos, Ptolemy discussed astrology. Both sets of books were undisputed authority on their respective subjects. 1,600 years. Fortunately they were translated into Arabic because with the collapse of the Roman Empire around the 4th century much accumulated knowledge disappeared as libraries were destroyed and books burned.
Star Cataloger. Hipparchos, 190 to 120 BCE, was one of the greatest of the Greek astronomers. He catalogued over 1,000 stars and developed the mathematical science of trigonometry. In this modern image, he is looking through a tube at the stars, but the telescope was not yet invented. The leap year. One of the problems confronting the astronomer, priests of antiquity, was the fact that the lunar year and the solar year did not match up. By the middle of the first century BCE, the Roman calendar was so mixed up that Julius Caesar ordered the Greek, Greek mathematician Sosagenes to develop a new system. He came up with the idea of a leap year every four years. This meant that the odd quarter day of the solar year was rationalised every four years. This is a coin of Julius Caesar. Farnes Atlas. Very few images of the constellations have survived from antiquity. The main source for our knowledge is this 2nd century Roman copy of an earlier Greek statue. The marble statue has the demigod Atlas holding the heavens on his shoulders. 41 of the 48 Ptolemaic constellations are clearly marked in low relief. Navis the ship. Spherical Earth. The concept of a spherical Earth can be traced back to Greece in the 6th century BCE. By Ptolemy's time, astronomers were accustomed to working with earthly, terrestrial and starry celestial globes. The first terrestrial globe to be produced since antiquity. The 15th century globe by Martin B. Hain shows an image of the earth that is half based on myth. The Red Sea, for example, is coloured red the Red Sea, Africa, Europe. Arabic School of Astronomy. During the Dark Ages, the great civilizations of Islam continued to develop the science of astronomy. Uluq Beg, 15th century, set up his observatory on this site in one of Asia's oldest city, Samarkand, Uzbekistan. Here measurements were made with the naked eye. Geocentric universe. It is logical to make assumptions from what your senses tell you. From the earth, it looks as if the heavens are circling over our heads. There is no reason to assume the earth is moving at all. Ancient philosophers naturally believed that their earth was stable and the centre of the great cosmos. The planets were arranged in a series of layers with the starry heavens, or the fixed stars as they were called, forming a large crystalline casing. The Earth at the centre. The Earth, the geocentric of Earth's centred universe, is often re referred to as the Ptolemaic universe by later scholars to indicate that this was how classical scientists, like the great Ptolemy, believed the universe was structured. He saw the Earth as the centre of the universe, with the Moon, the known planets and the Sun 
moving around it. Aristarchus, 310 to 230 BCE, had already suggested that the Earth travels around the Sun, but his theory was rejected because it did not fit in with the mathematical and philosoph philosophical beliefs at the time. Engraving of the Ptolemaic Universe, 1490. Astronomers have always found it difficult to explain the three-dimensional motions of the heavens. Ptolemy used something like this armillary sphere to do his complex astronomical calculations and to pass these ideas on to his students. Meridian ring, horizon ring, Tropic of Cancer, Sun, Earth, Moon, Equinoctical Colia passes through the poles and the equinoxes, Arctic Circle, Solstitial collier passes through the poles and the solstices. Ecliptic. Celestial equator. This is a French painted armillary sphere from 1770. This is the stand. Problems with the geocentric universe. The main problem with the idea of an Earth-centred universe was that it did not help to explain the apparently irrational universe. Was that it behaviour or some of the planets, which sometimes appear to stand still or move backwards against the background of the stars? Early civilizations assumed that these odd movements were signals from the gods. But the Greek philosophers spent centuries trying to develop rational explanations for what they saw. The most popular was the notion of epicycles. The planets moved in small circles or epicycles on their orbits as they, as they circled the earth. Planet, epicycle, orbit, Earth. Planet makes small circles during its orbit. The celestial sphere. The positions of all objects in space are measured according to specific celestial coordinates. The best way to understand the cartography or mapping of the sky is to recall how the ancient philosophers imagined the universe was shaped. They had no real evidence that the earth moves, so they concluded that it was stationary and that the stars and planets revolve around it. They could see the stars wheeling around a single point in the sky and assumed that this must be one end of the axis of a great celestial sphere. They called it a crystalline sphere or the sphere of fixed stars because none of the stars seemed to change their positions relative to each other. The celestial coordinates used today come from this old-fashioned concept of a celestial sphere.
the starry, celestial and earthly terrestrial spheres share the same coordinates, such as a north and south pole and an equator. Star trails. A long photographic exposure of the sky taken from the northern hemisphere of the Earth shows the way in which stars appear to go in circles around the pole star or Polaris. Polaris is a bright star that lies within one degree of the true celestial pole, which in turn is located directly above the north pole of the Earth. The rotation of the Earth on its north-south axis is the reason why the stars appear to move across the sky. Those closer to the poles appear to move less than those further away. Measuring altitudes. One of the earliest astronomical instruments in the quadrant, it is simply a quarter of a circle, whose curved edge has been divided into 90 degrees. Other similar instruments include the sextant, which is one sixth of a circle. By sighting the object through the peepholes along one straight edge of the quadrant, the observer can measure the height or altitude of that object. The altitude is the height in degrees of a star above the horizon. It is not a linear measurement. A string with a plum bob falls from the apex of the quadrant so that intersects the divided arc. Since the angle between the vertical of the plum bob and the horizontal plane of the horizon is 90 degrees. Simple mathematics can be used to work out the angle of the altitude. Plum bob. Angle read off where string crosses the degree scale. Peep hole. Sight line. Peep hole, apex. Pole star, the plough, part of Ursa Major, the Great Bear. Horizontal plane. These two angles must add up to 90 degrees. Degrees marked on arc. In the diagram above, the angle measured by the quadrant is marked A, and the altitude of the star is marked B. These two together equal 90 degrees. Subtract A from 90 to find B the angular height of the star. Where is the pole star? To find a town on the earth, a map is used. To find a star in the night sky, astronomers need to use the celestial coordinates. The pole star is one useful marker in the northern hemisphere because it indicates the axis of the northern celestial pole. Since the north-south axis of both the Earth and the sky run at right angles to the terrestrial and celestial equators, which is me measured as 0 degrees, the pole star is measured as 90 degrees north. An observer looking at the pole star near the Arctic Circle sees it very high in the sky near the equator. 
the pole star barely rises above the horizon. From further south it is never seen at all. North-South axis, North Pole, the static Earth surrounded by the crystalline sphere of the fixed stars. Tropic of Cancer, Terrestrial Equator, Celestial Equator, Ecliptic, Tropic of Capricorn Pole Star Arctic Circle Celestial Sphere Tropic of Cancer Sun Saturn South Pole Antarctic Circle The Celestial Sphere This model of the Celestial Sphere records how the ancients viewed the universe. All the planets seem to travel along the same band as the Sun. Since eclipses happened along this path, it was called the ecliptic. This ecliptic seemed to run at an angle of 23 and a half degrees from the plane of the Earth's equator. As the Sun travelled along the ecliptic, the closest it got to the North Celestial Pole was when it passed through the constellation Cancer, and to the South Celestial Pole when in Capricorn. These points gave their names to the tropics. Measuring time. With solar time, one day equals the time it takes the Earth to make one full rotation on its axis from noon to noon. But because the Earth is also orbiting the Sun as well as spinning, the solar day is not accurate in relation to distant stars, and it is the stars that concern astronomers. They measure time in relation to a distant star. This day is the time that passes between two successive noons of a star. Noon being the moment when the star passes directly over the local meridian. This is called a sidereal day. distant star, the sun, second noon for sidereal time, second noon for solar time, noon on the first day. Pole star, 80 degrees latitude, Greenland, plough, pole star, 30 degrees latitude, Egypt, pole star, 0 degrees latitude, at the equator. there I'm going to stop the video and I hope you enjoyed that and if you did I hope you enjoy join me for another video next time thank you for watching bye